soir. What's up? Stuart Scott back at you in the research room for another heart-pumping episode of Stump the Schwab, the show that pits contestants with some sports knowledge upstairs against a man who basically just owns a penthouse, ESPN's ruler of research, the Schwab. Yo, man, how is life at the top, Schwabby? A-OK. -okay. Just, you know, give me that special key so I can get up there and hang out with you sometime in front of the flat screen, you know, watching You know what? Stump you have to Schwab. come up and visit me sometime. All right. It's the Schwab's world. The rest of us just living in it. So let's meet the three contestants hoping to make his life miserable tonight. First up, he is an accountant from Boston, Mass, who says he is not afraid of failure. I guess he's in the right place. Mike Cooper. He is a financial analyst who idolizes Al Kaline, Bob Chalfin. And he likes good wine and old movies, probably rainy nights, and says age is on his side. The sentimental man, Ken Haston. So, Ken, good wine, old movies, rainy night, age is on your side. Is that just like another way of saying I, I'm an old guy and I like old guy things? Yeah, I guess you could say that, Stu, but... Uh, Basically? I, I'm ho hopefully it'll uh, work to my advantage. If, and I say if, one of these three stumps to Schwab, he's going to win five grand and have a chance to make our championship show with $25,000 on the line. Let the competition begin. And we set it off tonight with our first game. It's called Leading Off. And here's how you play. I'm going to throw out a question that has multiple answers. One by one, our contestants and the Schwab will give an answer. Each correct response worth one point. If you are wrong, you're out for only that one question. At the end of the first game, though, the contestant with the lowest score... <sighs> you're out of here. Never to be heard from again. Let's get it started with leading off. Okay, Ken, we are going to start with you. 24 players have won the NBA's Most Valuable Player Award since it was introduced in 1956. Name them. Larry Bird. Correct. Bob. Magic Johnson. Correct. Mike. Michael Jordan. Correct. Schwab. Bill Russell. Correct. Ken. Wilt Chamberlain. Correct. Bob. Shaquille O'Neal. Correct. Mike. Wes Unseld. Correct. Schwab. Tim Duncan. Correct. Ken. Oscar Robertson. Correct. Bob. Allen Iverson. Correct. Mike. Carl Malone. Correct. Schwab. Well, we're all on it. Moses Malone. Correct. Ken. Uh, Jerry West. Incorrect. You're out for this one topic. Bob. Larry Bird. Already said you're out for this topic. Mike. Bob Cousy. Correct. Schwab. We'll stay on the Bobs. Bob McAdoo. Correct. Mike. Hello, Mike. <laughs> Mike, we need an answer. Mission Control calling Mike. Bob Ma... Bob Ma... <laughs> <laughs> Now for this topic, Akeem Schwab. Olajuwon. Akeem Olajuwon. Dream did was, it. Was David Robinson said? Uh, David Robinson was not said. Neither okay. was Willis Reed. Bob Pettit just rolling, rolling along. Take a look at the scores. Schwab, he's in the lead. He's got five points. Ken has three. Bob has three. And Mike has four. We're going to keep it rolling. The next topic and leading off, Bob, we're going to start with you. Since Bjorn Borg won his first of six French Open titles in 1974, 17 other players have won the men's singles tournament. Name them. Michael Chang. Correct. Mike. Andre Agassi. Correct. Schwab. Jim Courier. Correct. Ken. Uh, Gustavo, Gustavo Gaudio. We cannot take it. Incorrect. Out for this topic. Bob. Yannick Noah. Correct. Mike. Roger Federer. Incorrect. Out for this topic. Schwab. Gaston Gaudio. That's the Gaudio you were thinking about, Ken. Correct. Bob. Boris Becker. Incorrect. 
Not for this topic, Schwab. Not only was he thinking of Gaston Gaudio, but he was also going the other way, Gustavo Cuerta. Exactly. And He's... since we're the French Open, you got to go with all the Spaniards. Uh, Carlos Moya won it. Albert Costa won it. Sergey Bruguera okay. won it. That's why they love it. All right, all right, all right, Schwabi. We know, we know, you know, we know, you know. Let's take a look at the scores right now. Schwab has eight. Ken has three. Bob has five. And Mike has five. This is the last leading off. Mike, we're going to start with you. Since 1949, the New York Yankees have had 16 managers. Name them. Joe Torre. Correct. Schwab. Dick Hauser. Correct. Ken. Ralph Hauk. Correct. Bob. Casey Stengel. Correct. Mike. Buck Showalter. Correct. Schwab. Bob Lemon. Correct. Ken. Gene Michael. Correct. Bob. Billy Martin. Correct. Mike. Joe McCarthy. Incorrect. You're out for this topic. Schwab. Because of his name, I love it. Stump. Merrill. <laughs> Correct. Ken. Uh, Bob Lemon. Already said you're out for this topic. Bob. Yogi Berra. Correct. That's Schwab. what I was just about to say. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Bucky Dent. Red Sox fan. Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Bob. Bill Verdon. Correct. Schwab. That was a good one. Uh, let's see. <laughs> if these, uh, Johnny Keen. Ooh, from Schwab to Bob. <sighs> Need it. I don't have a guess. That's right. You're out, Schwab. Ralph Hauk. I was said. said. Already said. How about Lou Pinella? Oh, <laughs> geez, man. Let's take a look at the scores. Schwab has 13. Ken has five. Bob has nine, and Mike has seven. Ken, we got to let you go, man. All right, Bob, Mike, $5,000 still out there for the taking, but only one of you can advance to the Schwab showdown. We're going to find out who it is after the break. Stuart Scott here with Bob, Mike, and the big fella, the lovable, huggable, but nearly unstumpable Schwab. Whole lot at stake right now, because the winner at the end of this round gets a shot at glory and five large in the Schwab showdown. That's a lot of paper. Guys, we're going to clear the scoreboard for this next game. We call it Who Am I? And here's how you play. We're going to give you an athlete's bio, one clue at a time. You're going to alternate receiving clues, and after each clue, you can either answer or pass. But if you answer incorrectly, you will be locked out for the rest of that athlete while your opponent can just hear the remaining clues at his leisure and answer at any old time. The first clue is worth seven points, then points decrease in value. Basically, pass it till you know it, and then answer. So, let's play Who Am I? Bob goes first. Schwabi, take it away. Bob, for seven points. I was born in Richmond, Virginia on July 10th, 1943. Pass. Mike, for six points. I enrolled at UCLA in 1961 and later helped, the Bru helped lead the Bruins to an NCAA title. Pass. Bob, for five points, Mike Tyson has a tattoo of me on his left arm. Pass. Mike, for four points, I won the first men's U.S. Open. Pass. Bob, for three points, I had quadruple bypass surgery following a heart attack in 1979 and retired the next year. Jerry West? Jerry West is incorrect. Mike? Pass. Here we go for two points. I was arrested in 1985 during an anti-apartheid protest and again in 1992 while protesting the treatment of Haitian refugees. Arthur Ashe? Arthur Ashe is correct. <laughs> Two points go to Mike. Mike, we start with you. Take it away, Schwabi. Here we go, Mike, for seven points. I own and operate my own high-performance tire and wheel business in San Gabriel, California. Pass. Bob, for six points. I didn't play varsity basketball until my senior year at Washington High School in Milwaukee. Pass. 
Mike for five points. Before playing for Alabama, I played two seasons at Three Rivers Junior College. Pass. Bob for four points. In 2002, I filed a $40 million lawsuit against a newspaper that reported I had broken my hand during a fight on my yacht. Latrell Sprewell. Latrell Sprewell is correct. Four points go to Bob. Bob, you lead it four to two. And Bob, this Who Am I starts with you. Bob, for seven points. I was born on May 7th, 1933. Pass. Mike, for six points. I played college football at Louisville. Pass. Bob, for five points. I was released shortly after I was drafted into the NFL in 1955 and then played Sandlot football for the semi-pro Bloomfield Rams. Johnny Unitas. Johnny U is the right answer. Bob, you lead it 9-2. to two. Mike, we start with you. Take it away, Schwab. For seven points, I was selected with a number one overall draft pick. Pass. Bob, for six points, I won six scoring titles in my career. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is incorrect. Mike, for six points, if you could answer that question with the two clues. You don't have to. You can pass off. Pass. Okay, we go to five points. I dropped out of school at 16 and had an impressive career in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Gordy Howe? Gordy Howe is also incorrect. Correct answer, Mario Lemieux. We continue. Bob, we're going to start with you. For seven points, Bob, I have a fraternal twin named Terry. Pass. Mike, for six points, I got my first major league hit off Nolan Ryan in 1989. Pass. Here we go, Bob, for five points. At LSU, I was suspended for chasing a heckling fan into the stands, which kept me from playing in the College World Series. Albert Bell. Albert Bell is correct. This is the last two, am I? Bob, you're up 14 to 2. Mike, we start with you. Mike, for seven points. Besides starring in baseball, I was also a basketball standout and the valedictorian at my Oklahoma high school. Pass. Bob, for six points. In 1966, at the age of 18, I was minor league player of the year and had my jersey number retired by Peninsula of the Carolina League. Pass. Mike for five points. In 1982, my second to last season in the majors, I had 19 errors after moving to third base. Pass. Bob for four points. Off the field, I have authored several books, sung with the Cincinnati Pops, and starred on the television show The Baseball Bunch with the San Diego Chicken. Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench is correct. That's the game with a score 18 to 2. Bob rolls. Mike, your Schwabi experience is over, man, but hope you enjoyed the sights and sounds. Now uh, you gotta go. Bob, it's all about you, man. A chance to reach the sports trivia mecca coming up after the break. Stump the Schwab. Stuart Scott back at you on Stump the Schwab, where we are gearing up for a one-on-one -on -one battle between Bob and his nemesis tonight. The Schwab. Now, Bob, I understand you got two daughters, Angel and Summer, and ever mm -hmm. since you told them you were going to be on Stump the Schwab, what have they been doing? They're Stump the Schwab fanatics. They, they watch, watch the it show all the time. All the time. They quiz me on stuff. They watch the show, and I have to stand in the other room so I can get the list on the leading off part. All right, Bob, if you stump the Schwab tonight, your daughters will be happy, and you're going to take home $5,000. Plus, you're going to clinch a spot in our semifinal round. That'll keep you in the running for the championship show with $25,000 at stake. Time for the Schwab showdown. And here's how you play. Summer, Angel, you're, you're watching at home, all right? All right, there are four categories. Each category contains three questions worth one, two, and three points. For every incorrect answer, you get a strike. Three strikes, and you are out. You also have one pass. You can pass a question to your opponent and make him answer, but you only get one pass. And conceivably, it's just like a, you know, strategy thing. If your opponent has a pass, 
they could pass it back to you. All right, tonight's categories are true patriots. We're talking New England Patriots head coaches. Packing it in, all about pack 10 hoops. Streakers, no, not naked people. Questions about famous sports streaks and keeping track. We're talking about motor racing here. Bob, dog, your chance right now. You can stump the Schwab because you're going to pick the categories that Schwab has to answer. Schwab, you're going to pick the categories that Bob has to answer. You ready to do this? I'm ready. All right, Bob, pick your first category for the Schwab. We'll go keeping track. Keeping track for one point, Schwab. In 1959, what motor racing legend won the first Daytona 500? First Daytona 500 was Richard Petty's dad, Lee Petty. That is correct. For one point. Schwab, so, uh, pick a category for Bob. True Patriots won. For one point. Who was the New England Patriots head coach in their first Super Bowl appearance? I can see it, and I just can't think. it or not I am gonna pass you use it now mm -hmm. thank you Raymond Barry it is I Raymond can see Barry his face. is correct one point for Schwab <laughs> Bobby now I get to pick a category for Schwab packing it in for one all right packing it in for one point Schwab what NBA guard is Oregon State's career scoring leader and also the Pac-10's career leader in steals and assists. And he almost went to St. John's. Gary Payton. GP, are you with me? One point for Schwab. <laughs> Streakers won. Streakers for one. Bob, what pitcher holds the record for consecutive 15-win seasons with 17? That would be Greg Maddox. That would be Greg Maddox. Bob's on the board. One point. Category for Schwab. Um, we'll go keeping track. Keeping track for two points. Schwab, in 1999, what driver competed in the Indy 500 and the Coca-Cola 600 on the same day? Oh, boy. I know a couple of people who've done it. I'm just not sure if he's the first one. I'm going to pass. Since you do not have a pass left, Bob, you have to answer. In 1999, what driver competed in the Indy 500 and the Coca-Cola 600 on the same day? Bobby Gordon. That is incorrect. Was it Tony Stewart? It was Tony, Tony Stewart. Stewart. Oh, wow, I would have gotten it. Oh, okay. One strike for you, Bob. Schwab, pick a category for Bob. Let's try uh, streakers, two. For two points, Bob. What NBA team holds the record for consecutive victories with an astonishing 33? It would be the Los Angeles Lakers. It would be the Los Angeles Lakers. Two points, Bob picks up. <laughs> We're tied 3-3. Three, three. Bob, pick a category for Schwab. Let's go packing it in. Packing it in for two points. <laughs> what University of Nevada head coach took over the basketball program at Stanford after Mike Montgomery moved to the NBA? That would be Trent Johnson. Yes, it would. I mean, just, I mean, pause, man. Act like you think about it for a minute. That was, that was... Drops a yard. I happy. know what I know. What's up? <laughs> Two points for Schwab. <laughs> Schwab leads five to three. Pick the category for True Bob. Patriots, two. True Patriots for two points. Bob, with the victory in Super Bowl 39, Bill Belichick achieved the best playoff coaching record in NFL history. What coach did Belichick pass... And what is Belichick's postseason record? The coach he passed was Vince Lombardi. Correct. And what is Belichick's postseason record? Belichick's postseason record is six and one. <clears throat> it's ten and one. Oh, that's right. Vince Lombardi was 9-1. Belichick is now 10-1. and 
and you now have two strikes. Pick a category for Schwab. Um, let's go keeping track for three. For three points, Schwab. In terms of distance, what are the longest and shortest NASCAR tracks? Both of you have used your passes, so you got to answer. Bristol Motors. Uh, I was going to say Bristol Motor Speedway is the shortest, but I'm, yeah. I'll, I'll try. Bristol Motor Speedway is the shortest? Incorrect. Oh, there you go. <laughs> the shortest is Martinsville, 0.526 miles. The longest, do you know the longest? Uh, I was going to say Texas Motor Speedway, but they don't do it anymore. Talladega, 2.66 miles. One strike for Schwab. You still lead five to three. Pick a category. Uh, we'll go True Patriots 3. For three points, Bob, before moving on to NFL greatness, Bill Parcells began his coaching career as an assistant in 1964 at what college? Before moving on to NFL greatness, Bill Parcells began his coaching career as an assistant in 1964 at what college? There's one that's stuck in my head, but I don't think that's the right one. Or should you go with your first instinct? I'm going to go with my, my first instinct, because I'm going to say Army. You have a second instinct? <laughs> first one wasn't good enough. No, not quite. Hastings College. That's your third strike. Angel Summer, Daddy did well, though. I'm just saying, Daddy gave it his all. Bob, you almost reached the top. Another night, another win. But the big man is beatable. Will it happen next time? Three new contestants roll up right in this house with hopes and dreams. They enter the research room, but the Schwab will be like all rolled down, waiting for them. The Stumpy Schwab, I'm Stuart Scott. Hugs and hand pounds, everybody.